Welcome ladies and gentlemen, my name is Brian McLogan and in this video, I am going to work through 20 basic trigonometric identities. And we're just gonna work on simplifying these identities to a single trigonometric function. And the identities that we're gonna work on are the, or the identities that we're going to use um, to simplify is going to be the reciprocal identity, the quotient identity, the even odd identity, as well as the co-function identity. Now, these identities we you know have in our notes so we can easily look them up. So I'm not going to <clears throat> go over all of those identities, but I am going to kind of review with you what I do um, to remember these identities because, you know, just memorizing them is not always going to be a good use of your time. And I don't tell my students to memorize these identities, but there are some things that I think about or at least visualize in my brain when I'm trying to recall these. And I think it'd be beneficial for you. So when I want to do the, either the quotient identity um, or the uh, reciprocal identities, I always think about the um, a coordinate point on the unit circle. Okay, so I just think of the coordinate point x, y on the unit circle. And that allows me to remember what, um, what these identities are going to be. Now, if it is a even odd function or a reciprocal or the co-function, something that we're not as used to, I think about what the graphs look like. So that is going to be for the co-function or the even odd. So that's why it's important. That's why we studied, you know, knowing what those graphs look like, um, because that's going to help us kind of visualize uh, the types of functions that we're dealing with and what the identities are going to be. So, all right, so we're going to work through these 20 examples. And again, I will just let you know which identity I am using as well as what is my thought process because I don't have the identities in front of me and I wouldn't um, expect my students or you to try to memorize these. But I'll kind of go through my thought process so hopefully that is beneficial to you. All right. Um, so remember that the sine coordinate, you know, when we talked about sine, like sine was y and cosine was x, right? When we talked about like coordinate points on, or evaluating trigonometric functions on the unit circle. So if I have really y over x, you know, sine is x, sine of x over cosine of x, that's really like y over x in other terms. Well, y over x we know is also tangent based on our trigonometric uh, definitions. Actually, I'm just gonna write this down below. So this is going to be simplified to tangent of x. Um, one over secant of x. Now this one kind of gets a little bit um, confusing. You can think of like sine would be one over y, right? Or so if we did like one over y, we could see that we, we could recognize that would be one over cosecant of x. Well, if secant is gonna be the same thing, like what is the reciprocal of secant? Well, remember one over x or one over x is, uh, or sorry, one over cosine would be secant. So one over secant is just going to be cosine. Those are the reciprocal. You can see that reciprocal relationship. Now, when we get into cosine of negative x, I'm thinking of the graph. Now, again, when we go back to graphs and transformations, remember that negative is a reflection about the y-axis. So if we look at the cosine graph where we visualize what the parent graph looks like, we recognize that that graph is symmetrical about the y-axis. So therefore, the negative x is going to be the same for positive x. We also talk about the um, cosine function as being even. So therefore, we can say that that is just going to simplify to cosine of x. However, when we think about the uh, cosecant of negative x, um, the cosecant function is not even. The, this function is odd. So the cosecant of negative x is actually going to give us a negative cosecant of x. Now, if sine over cosine is tangent, then cosine over sine is going to be cotangent of x. Um, now, I don't really get with students as far as like the cofunction of Denny's, like you can see pi halves minus x. But again, like if we're really applying transformation to the cosecant function, what is the only graph it's gonna look like? The only graph cosecant can look like is the secant function, right? It's not gonna look like sine, it's not gonna look like cosine or tangent. The only function that this can look like if you apply these transformations would be secant. Um, tangent is a odd function, again, symmetrical about the origin, so therefore tangent of negative x is just going to be negative tangent of x. Um, again, cotangent, if you apply these transformation, is um, going to, the only graph that this could look like would be the tangent of x. Sine is also an odd function. If you kind of visualize this graph, it's not symmetrical about the y-axis. So therefore x, or negative x, is going to be equivalent to negative sine of x. 
Um, so one over cosine, again, that's really like one over x. Well, again, if you remember our definitions for our trigonometric functions, that is going to be secant of x. And again, you can just see that relationship, right? One over secant is cosine, one over cosine is secant. That's that reciprocal relationship here, as well as here is the quotient identities. Here's another even and odd. Um, cotangent is odd, just like tangent was odd. So therefore, um, doo -doo -doo -doo. cotangent of x is equal to a negative uh, tangent or cotangent of x. All right, um, co-function identities of tangent is going to give us the cotangent function. Um, secant though is going to be actually even just like cosine. So again, if you look at that graph, you can see it's symmetrical about the y-axis. So secant of negative x is going to be actually, not cosine, ugh, don't do that. It's going to be secant of x. So really the nice thing that you can remember is only cosine and secant are even. So therefore the secant or cosine of negative ver values is just going to be the same as the positive. If I were to apply transformations to cosine, the only graphic, the only function it could look like would be sine of x. Um, one over cosecant is just going to equal sine of x as well. One over tangent. Now this one's also um, interesting. Again, that's the reciprocal of tangent. Well, again, we already kind of did this before, right? Like here's tangent, here's cotangent. Well, the reciprocal of tangent we already know is yes, it's cosine over sine. But if I was just going to write that as one trigonometric function, you can see we can write it as cotangent. And then obviously we're just going to write this one as tangent of x. Um, the secant is going to be like cosecant of x. And then the cofunction of sine is going to be using uh, just cosine of x. So again, just to kind of recap the way that I like to look at these, obviously there's only only two that we use for um, for the quotient identities, so that's kind of basic. But when you're doing the reciprocal identities, you know, think of that x and y. Remember, sine represents the y coordinate on the unit circle, x represented the x coordinate on the unit circle. It typically, typically from there, you can go ahead and figure out what those reciprocal relationships are. Remember, sine is with cosecant, or sine and cosecant are reciprocals of each other, cosine and secant are reciprocals of each other, and tangent and cotangent are reciprocals of each other. When you get into the cofunction identities, just think about the graphs, right? The sine and the cosine graph are the two graphs that look the same, right? You can apply transformations and you can get one function to look like the other. Same thing for cosecant and um, secant, as well as tangent and cotangent. But those are the only pairs that actually look anything like each other. And then last but not least is the even and odd. And really, the, you know, the trigonometric function of a negative angle is always going to be negative except for our cosine and our secant function because those are the only two functions that are even, meaning they are symmetrical about the y-axis. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully this helped you out, and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Cheers.